Hey everyone, buckle up for an amazing new episode of the Pulling on Heaven podcast. We are going to cut straight to the heart of the matter. We're going to solve every problem in church. We're just going to make <laughs> bring back Jesus today. How's today. that? Can we do that? Right now, right here. He's here. <laughs> He's coming today. He's coming today. He woke me up today. He spoke to me today. He received the praise that I was so honored that he would even consider receiving because he's so God and he's so good. And I'm thankful. You know what? Uh, We were talking about this uh, just a a little while ago, and we said, "Let's, let's go ahead and do it. Praise, worship to God. Yeah. You know, we... and. And listen, I understand the the, uh, the the theme, but it's kind of the underlying attitude sometimes that I feel we need to pay a little more attention to. Yeah. And Let me set the table with one thing I was gonna, I was going to set up with. Um, I I grew up involved in worship. I've been a worship leader mm-hmm. in different churches of the years. Your You've church too, yeah. back of the our at church the time. Yes. I, 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 mm. back in the old time and destiny days, yes. and played bass with Jonathan, even though I wasn't a bass player, but I did the best that I could. <laughs> but uh, but no one knew. But you ended up, you personally ruined worship for me for all time. Thank you. One time, <laughs> one time when you, you gave a, you gave a message in the, the, I don't know if it was literally titled this, but it could have, it could have literally titled this. And it was, your will is your worship. Yeah. And I was actually somebody who at the time, um, wrapped up a lot of my identity in worship and thinking I understood good worship, understood what worship was about, what it meant. And when you said that, you know, it was like, and like the value of a church or the value of anything was how strongly they worship. And uh, someone once came up to me in the service, I wasn't leading worship, I was in the back and they came up to me and go like, oh, I really like the way you worship. And I was like, oh, thank you. know, And I felt really proud and all that kind of stuff. And then I remember one time, um, before before God sentenced me to playing bass, <laughs> I remember playing playing one time leading worship, playing guitar, and I had this I had this let's call it a come to Jesus moment where I realized for myself personally, I was realized at the end of doing worship, I was more into what people thought about how my cool playing was. Than what whether they were moved moved by God. Yeah. So all that to say is I have an interesting relationship to worship now, and uh, I love the worship of our church. We are blessed with some amazing singers who come in, and then Jonathan yeah. is just so gifted. But I think we would all agree that there's there's something to worship and worship singing beyond the idea of your life being worship. But there's something there's something more than I think we've touched upon yet. And we, that's kind of where we were we were starting from and I just want to kind of lay that foundation as we go forward. Yeah, you know, I I Paul said I pray for you always that you may have the spirit of wisdom and understanding so you can know Christ better. So you may know him better. And I, I, that's one of my prayers all the time. God, I just want to know you better. I want to know you more. At no point in time should we ever think that we just, we have it. We've got it. We've yeah. got it down. Yeah. Uh, because it's like a breath. You, you can't hold on to that one. You know, you let it go. The, the, the power of a breath is that you release it. You know, it comes in and you can only hold breath for so long. You can do it very long, you can pass out. And when you do, you're going to exhale that breath. And that's giving. Uh, that that's receiving and taking. It's really kind of the uh, essence of life. Uh, Christ so loved the world. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He gave that whosoever would believe in Him would then have eternal life. It's God breathing out His life, His Spirit into us, as He did into Adam uh, in the Genesis of time. And man, uh, meaning uh, Earth, uh, became a living soul because of the ruach of God. We inhale the life of God, and that life continues on today. Worship is the same thing. Uh, worship isn't so much about what we get out of it, and and this is what I'm what I mean. Uh, you know, as a worshiper, you know, back in the day uh, when I was just a, a young feller, I would uh, throw my equipment. I had a little PA system. I'd throw it and my guitar in the car and my microphone, and I'd go from city to city and state to state, and I just I had a I had a zeal to preach the gospel, to preach the word, and I felt God had given me some some wonderful revelation I just wanted to share with the world. And uh, it was an anointing of God on me, and I learned a lot. You know, you, you learn a lot as you do what you're called yeah. to do, and that's life. That's part of life, too, is learning. But learning from those experiences, not just saying that was a good or a bad experience, but 
but learning. And I'd throw my equipment in the car, and I'd take off, and I'd play, and I'd sing, and I'd preach, and I'd do it all. You know, one man... Uh, one, one man band. <laughs> one man band, yeah. Uh, one man ministry. And I remember traveling all around and, and coming to the realization that, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe I'm not, my gift isn't to be a, uh, uh, a, a professional singer uh, or a guitar player, but my profession, my call, my anointing is to worship. And that's only done from an individual's perspective towards who God is mm-hmm. in them. And not that people would come and say, hey, great job, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, and listen, I love when people come up and say, man, you sure. know, I want you to know the word really touched me. It really ministered to me. It spoke to me because that's the whole point. But we wonder too much. We consider too much so often. And in ministry, this is very true what someone else is thinking about what we just sang, what we just said, what we just did. You know, I hope that was good, you know, and, and sounding good and doing well, and that's great. You should be, you, know, you need to pro- be proficient, as proficient as you can. Whatever your hand finds to do. Do it with all. Do it with all your might. Yeah. And want it to be good, of course. Want it to be the best. But the, but, but the, the, the underlying, the, the, the synergy, the, the embryo, the heartbeat of everything to do with worship is how we worship him one to one me and god i seek you what what really what really is worship how can you really define what worship is if you were to get down to the foundation of worship what what is worship do we get up and sing songs uh slow songs fast songs um uh, you know, that we shout and dance and we wave scarves or flags or, you know, whatever it is we do. What what was is that worship? Well, it's things people do and things you can do when you're worshiping. But worship in essence is a heart surrendered to the will of God. Yeah. A heart that acknowledges him as the one and only true, ever faithful, ever holy God. And why do we worship, you know, is a question. These are some questions I think every worshiper, not just worship leader, yeah. uh, but every worshiper should ask, what, what, is, what am I doing? You know, am I I'm wanting the people to see that I am worshiping, you know, in church, I, so, so everybody knows that I'm, you know, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, or is it that uh, I'm just hoping that, you know, that this song really just hits home, or is it not about me or really the audience in front of me is it really about who god is and who he is in me and that's really what worship is about worship is really about who christ is who god is and glorifying god in these vessels and these vessels then become the instrumentation of worship yeah uh it's it's us it's us it's us what we do before we open our mouth and say i'm going to worship it's what we believe before we say anything because song is a language all its own and i'm not just talking about the the lyrics or the rhythm Mm -hmm. or the music i'm talking about the heart where it all comes from why do i do what i do because I'm so in awe of you, God, that I can't help, I can't hold it back. I just want to talk about your greatness. When the Holy Spirit came in the book of Acts, in the day of Pentecost, the Word says that everyone heard them speaking in their own language, which, which interprets only in this way, that no matter who you were or what language you spoke, you understood what they were saying, because they were speaking by the unity of the Spirit of God which is universal language. Mm-hmm. God is love. And everyone heard him, the word said, people from all, all nations heard them, them being the, the, the disciples, speaking in tongues, speaking in a language by the Holy Spirit that they all understood. And I wonder what they were saying. The word says they were talking about the wonders, the glory mm-hmm. of God. That's worship. Wow. Talking about the wonders of God, not what I've been through, what you've been through, what they've been through. I want you all to know that I understand. I've been there too. You know, I've had my rough roads, and I get it. There's there's message in those songs, but are those songs more of a message than a worship song? Yeah. Is worship really not about what we've been through, what we did, or we what we didn't do, or, or is it really about who Christ is? It really is. Is it really about the glory? 
and the wonder of God. Yeah. How great God is. I wonder what the song the angels would sing. I, I, I read in the word that they're saying something like, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, who is, who was, and who is to come. You know, blessed be your holy name. It has nothing to do with even the angels. They're not no, talking I about. I was just about to say that. Them, yeah, I love what you were saying about the about the angels and holy, 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 because that's that's like what you said. It's just about God. And so many of our songs today that we bring into worship, you know, is about us. And I think there is a difference between singing a song. There's so many great songs that are out there, both the people Absolutely. who are believers and not believers that are about their experiences. And that's part of the re relatable spirit of who God created us to be as humans. Yeah. But that's not necessarily means it's worship. Well, according to the word, if you if you look at the word, not the traditions, you know, tra I, I, I grew up, I get my guitar and I'd play and sing some of the songs that I'd heard. You know, it's what you did. It's what I knew to do. But God's doing something different in this generation. And he would have done it in any generation if we had the heart to hear and believe that God was going to do a new thing and really, mm -hmm. really look for the new thing and not just modifications of the old thing. And Worship, according to the word of the Lord, is in admiration and awe of who God is. I mean, worship is uh, falling on your knees, not necessarily just because you're hitting your knees, but because your heart is yielded, surrendered, broken before God. Uh, some of the greatest worship comes out of people when they are in some of the most uh, challenging times of their lives yeah. because it's, they feel that everything but God is hopeless, that he is the only hope. And when you begin to communicate from your heart that way in regards to God, that's true worship. You're in awe of him. Uh, you're in awe of his splendor, in awe of his love. You're in worship to admire, to, to adore uh, God, to, to speak of his greatness and his goodness. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of songs, we can call them secular or gospel songs, where people have had experiences, and those songs have ministered to people, absolutely. Uh, and and touched a lot of people in in a lot of encouraging ways because people will say well I was th went through that too they made a song out of their experience and it touched me they can be beautiful songs beautiful melodies and lyrics and and so on but we're not talking about that we're not talking about songs we're not talking yeah. about singing we're talking about worship okay yeah. worship and I think those those two um, they're two very different things singing songs and worship uh, I'm singing a worship song. Well, m maybe more accurately, I am going to worship with song, and I, I and it, it there really is, there really is a a big difference. It's not a matter of semantics. It's it's a matter of a heartbeat uh, and and really understanding. Worship is us coming before God in adoration of who He is. I kind of often wonder if the whole song service uh, in in my church, every church, any church, and listen, uh, uh, in our church, people sing a lot of those type songs too. And I'm not the worship leader, but I'm constantly calling out, saying, "Listen, we we it, we let's worship." Let, I, and I've ministered a lot of uh, messages about just worshiping. I, I see the time the day, the season, but I can't make someone worship. Yeah. I can't make anyone get it any more than anyone could make me get it. But worship, according to the Word and what I see in the Word of God, is absolute awe of who Christ is. And if the lyrics carried that spirit yeah. of simple awe of who Christ is, maybe we actually you know, we, we worshipers began to to write from the heartbeat of worship and honor to God, maybe some of their prayer life when they're just worshiping God. Maybe those moments in time, in, in, in not only their experience, but what brought them to the revelation to get them through that experience. What was it? It was being in awe of God. That's true worship. Um, the scriptures tell us that we come before the Lord with worship and, and with a heart of worship, and we da bow down before him and we honor God. The heavens cry, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who is, who was, and who is to come, blessed be his holy name. Maybe if we heard worship in heaven, we wouldn't know what it is based yeah. on what we understand well, worship think, to be. And I think sometimes it, there there's certain subtleties that we were talking about earlier that um, on the one hand, you could dismiss as, well, maybe we're nitpicking something, but it still goes to the heart. You were using an example uh, when we were talking about this before um, of, of uh, Lord, you're worthy of my praise. 
Oh. Talk to me about why why that kind of rubs you a little bit. Or what what stands <laughs> out about that? Well, listen, I I understand what people are saying, uh, you know, and I have no one in specific, no group or or individual. Sure. Uh, it's just something I've heard a couple of times that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way, uh, and it, it it would be something like you are worthy of my praise, and I feel that's backward, you know. And I get the the spirit of the thing. I don't think that's what they're saying, but it's important how we communicate. Uh, I've said for many years, we're important for the way we are interpreted because we are the one communicating. And so take responsibility for the way someone else interprets you uh, and at least take a look at that. They may misinterpret you, but then that tells me that maybe I need to work on my communication skills more. I need to make sure I'm communicating what is in my heart. And it's the same thing instead of, in my mind, you are worthy of my praise. And again, I understand. Yeah. And I'm not coming down on anyone. I'm not criticizing anyone. I'm just saying, my mind is, God, I thank you that you will receive my praise. I thank you that you are so worthy. You have given me the honor of being able to bring praise to you that you will accept, that you will receive, because you are so holy. And and, in saying that, I'm not saying or trying to communicate this distance between God and man. I'm, I'm actually trying to communicate the opposite, so let me do that. God brings us together in unity with His holiness when we talk about how holy He is, because we are only the righteousness of God through Christ, and no yeah. other way. Yeah. Not of works, least any man should boast. And so if we're going to worship, and, and this is my perspective on worship, so I'm not criticizing anyone. We're talking about what worship is. That's what how this began today um, in this podcast. And worship is adoration, awe of who God is, declaring his glory, his greatness, his love, his holiness, his righteousness. God is a holy God above all things. He's holy, which means he doesn't descend to to accommodate man. He elevates man to unify with him, who he is, who God is. And in worship to God, it's not... Uh, worship is not necessarily a song that talks about what we've been through. It, it can be a great song, a tool of ministry, absolutely. Sure. But if we're we're talking about just the 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 purity of worship, it is really adoration, uh, edification to who God is, to the body of Christ, the greatness, the glory, the honor, the love, the mercy, the wisdom, the peace. The, the greatness of almighty, all-present, all-powerful, omnipresent, first, last, beginning, and end God. That's worship. That's acknowledging Him as the one and only. Uh, ministry through song is what I've been through or what's happened to me and how God brought me through it and, and, and all those things. But when I, when I think about worship, I don't think about you are worthy of my praise. I think about God. I thank you that you've made me worthy that I could even praise you, yeah. that you would accept praise from me, that you would allow me to honor you and and uh, to honor you. You would honor me by allowing me to worship you and to praise you. It's not honor to you. It's honor to me yeah. to be able to honor you. And in that, then God honors us. Only God can honor us. We can't honor ourselves. Jesus made that clear. So I just see worship uh, and 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 I see a, a day and a time, and not that no one's doing this, but a greater uh, reference of true worship in the sense that God is glorified and man is left out of the equation at that time or those times of just purity of worship, declaring who He is and His greatness. I can I can see uh, a great outpouring, if you will, yeah. of of the Spirit of God because we we do it Christ when we worship. There's a lot of things wonderful that happen. One of those is that we forget about ourselves. And Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, basically forget about you. Lay down yeah. your life. If you're going to follow me, lay down your life and follow me. The greatest thing we can do is bring God an offering that he will receive. Now, listen, wow. Cain and Abel, the first murderer on, in Scripture, was Cain. He killed Abel, his brother. And the reason Cain killed Abel is because Abel's sacrifice was received by God. And Cain's was not. And there's a lot of theory and ideas as to why God didn't, because one of them is because it wasn't a blood sacrifice. And and if that were the case, then God wouldn't have said, I will receive your sacrifice if you do well. And that's what God said to Cain. 
but this is what is important to me, what, what really struck me. In all that Cain did in, in, in being a murderer, the evil that he did in murdering his brother, first murder recorded yeah. in the Word, he at least knew how important it was to bring something that God would receive. Mm. Not what he would get out of it, but it meant so much to him. So we can learn something even from Cain. And what we should learn from Cain is we should have a heartbeat that it is so important, have such a conviction that, God, I want to bring you worship and praise that is pleasing to you, that you will receive. Praise that isn't about who I am or what I've been through. In that, I'm thankful to you. I thank you for all you've brought me through. I thank you for all you've done in my life. But true worship, to come before you, and if would you receive this offering from me? Would you receive this offering of praise and talk about, sing about, hum about, shout about how great and glorious God is? is you know, the, the favor of the Lord is pursuing me. He's after me. It's plain to see. And all I have to do is stop and worship him. Yeah. You know, that, now that's more of a, a worship uh, 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 song or a worship ditty or rap right, or right, whatever right. they call it that, that we would do. And then we do other things that talk about you know who we are but it's defining what worship is so we get a better handle this is this is ministering through music this is edifying through music this is worship and i believe in today's world today's worshipers we're going to see even more worship in our music and in in the lyrics that we use yeah. to glorify God. That's beautiful. Yeah. And it seems to me that, that that's how you allow it to spill out of that into every aspect of your life. Wow. Because now you're no longer, it's <clears throat> not about the certain contextualizations that we put our worship into. Right. And when we can worship him for just truly for who he is, yeah. when we're not part of the equation, then we can carry that yeah. to every part. And it's a revelation. I mean, seek God for revelation. Don't seek God for lyrics. You know, if you're a worshiper, if I have a word for you, seek God for revelation. Don't think about the song you want to write. Don't think about, it's kind of like, you know, for me, a message, and everyone yeah. is everyone experiences a different relationship with God. I, I, I want to know what God, what is it that would please you that I would say if I were just talking directly to the kingdom of God? What would you like to hear come out of my mouth? And I only want it to be the truth, and that's all that's going to come from you. So what do you want me to communicate to the people? Help me reveal who you are. That's, that's mine, and I'm sure many, many other ministers, pastors, evangelists, prophet, teachers, that's where they're coming from. But for worshipers, instead of, instead of laboring over the lyrics, labor over revelation. Seek God for revelation. God, what's on your heart? I want to, I want to, I want to show me how to reveal you in song. Show me how to move heaven with, with words that are revelatory, that are anointed by the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to say again, songs that talk about things you've been through, experiences, they're, they're amazing. They're, they are a tool. They minister to people. Uh, they are important. And uh, they've touched and changed and ministered to a lot of people. They've ministered to me. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about something very specific. What is worship in song? What is worship in prayer? Uh, worship isn't just telling God what you need and, and, uh, and, and where you need to go and, and what he said he was going to do. It's, it's surrendering to God. It can be few words, but a big surrender of your heart, you yeah. know and uh, acknowledging the greatness of who he is, that does something very dynamically powerful on the inside of us. It, it's kind of like it whitewashes our minds, it clears that slate so God can write the words from his heart on our heart. And that's what he said, I want to inscribe my word in your heart and in your minds, I'll write them and they'll remain there forever. And then out of that, life just changes into something that seems easier, seems more palatable, seems more exciting, seems more empowering. And in that, we become a great witness for who Christ in us is, and the love of Christ is more abounding. It's, it's just, there's just a lot more of it to give around and to give out because we are sensing the heart of God. So bottom line is, is seek God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, and listen to what his heart says and make a song, create a song, write a song out of the heartbeat of God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pastor. It's yeah. such a great word. Praise God. I, I love the greatness of how much God is God and only God is God, and that he shares that with us and he allows us to worship him. So my, my song would be something to the effect 
of, God, thank you that you would consider, I pray, receiving my praise today. You are so worthy, and I am so thankful that you would receive my praise in song or words today. Mm -hmm. Worthy is the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for tuning in. Until next time.